it cut right into that cow's body and cut them in half and it just fell open like that. You see all the insides, the bloods and guts and the intestines and all the internal organs just fall out. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to My Twisted Life with Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for a Walking Dead recap review, season eight, episode four, Some Guy. Really, AMC, y'all had to do us like that. Y'all really had to do us that way. I'm just, first of all, I'm glad that I was able to stay off of Twitter uh, while this was showing. My camera is tilted, and I can't figure out how to make it tilt the other way. My, my dog broke my tripod, so I had to buy a new one. And I'm not quite sure how to make it level off. Hmm. Okay, so let's get into this episode while I'm trying to fix this. Yeah, because that's definitely not level. That's level. That's tilted. Y'all can be looking at my videos all crooked and shit. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to do what we can do. So, starts off, Ezekiel is getting himself together, washing his face, putting on his garb. This is the day that they are about to go out to battle. At first, I was thinking this was going to be, this was a flashback all the way back to his former life because he had the do-rag on and everything. But no, it was just a flashback back to the day that they were about to go out to battle. He walk out um, into the land. I might be mixing stuff up. He walk onto the land, giving his victor speech to everybody about how uh, it was Shakespeare. I forgot the Shakespeare um, thing, but Jigma that he's quoting. But it's Shakespeare that he's quoting. He's going out saying how we're going out to battle. We're gonna fight the the, the non living. We're gonna win. This is our battle to win. I'm going to smile. I know we're leaving our families behind, but we, I'm still going to smile. You know, he was in his, his old kingly, his kingly stand speaking in such way. Yes, Ezekiel was doing that. So, and um, Ben's little brother come up to him. I'm eating peace too. Ben's little brother come up to him and he's like, hey, you're going to be brave because you are brave. We did that. Everybody going to come back and I'm going to smile. That's how we doing things up here. Then we cut back to the scene where everybody was wondering what happened last week. Everybody jumped at Ezekiel. Bullets was flying. You see this mangled bodies everywhere, arms off, legs here, they half a face is gone. Everybody dead. I mean, every freaking body is dead. Like, he said we're not going to lose one. We lost them all. Oh, now all of a sudden you see him. Hand, poke out. It's Ezekiel. He got four dead bodies on him. His leg jacked up. And he like, oh, dear God, what can I do? They cut back over to um, go into the building. Now we see Carl. Carl is creeping through the building. The dude's in there. The savior's in there loading up. They got 50 cows up in that joint. You see how big those bullets are? That's why people's bodies were blown like they was. I mean, they had whole cavities blown up in their joint. And um, Carol creeping through, and I'm always asking why it was Carol sweeping this building by her dog on self. I know I might call her C murder, but still, sometimes I worry about Mama Carol. Why is she sweeping this building by herself? So she going through, and she see the little guys, and um, some of them coming down the hallway. So she had to dip set off into a little room, and. A big dude come in, all aggressive sounding, like, why y'all doing this? Hurry the heck up. Y'all take it too dog along. They try to carry these big old 50 cal weapons and all this doggone ammunition. How much, How fast do you think they can go? It's like two of them struggling to carry the doggone thing in the first doggone place. How fast do you want them to move? Your big old butt ain't carrying nothing. Well, okay. Why they doing this? Carl is up in the ceiling. Because I was wondering where she went. I was like, oh my God, big boy gonna see her. Mm -mm. Carol lights them up from the ceiling. I don't know how Big Boy got away though, unless it was another. Oh, that was a different Big Dude. That's a different Big Dude. She lights them up. She jumps down, scans the room, and like, okay, I got to get up off this joint. But well, here comes some more saviors from the back room. 
and they they firing off at her, pop, 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 and she runs and gets outside. Okay, outside. The doggone walkers or the people are turning into walkers. I'm like, oh dear God, Ezekiel can't get up and run. He got the little broke leg. He slide across the floor like, oh, oh, but he crab crawling fast in the mud. He is moving fast on his buttocks. And uh, so he out there trying to get away from the walkers. He, you know, he don't want to kill his people. He really don't want to kill his people. But he have to like, you know, shoot a head or two. You know that draws more walkers the sound of bullets. And then while he's shooting, everybody inside could hear somebody shooting, but they weren't paying attention to that because they was inside loading up all these weapons inside. They wasn't even paying attention to that. They trying they doing all the shooting inside. They trying to get a curl. Okay. So he out there firing up, you go back to days of old. Like I say, they talking about they're showing his life, and he's talking to Carol about um he said he he finally finna be ready for this. And she was like, be ready, you know, we need to be ready right now. So he starts explaining about his history of how he was a zookeeper and he was a late and an actor on stage as well. He get off of acting, go back to the zoo, and there was this sick tiger that was five hundred pounds, and he didn't think like not a quick thought. It only lasts a couple seconds, but he reasoned with himself. She go in and help this tiger, and he made a friend for life. So that's how he got with Sheba, you know, being the zookeeper that he was. And he said, you know, I wasn't ready then. I made myself ready, and that's what's going to happen right now. I'm going to go out here and make myself the person I'm supposed to be. Because he's the only fault, like maybe one or two people, and maybe a walker or two <laughs> here or there. But as far as people, he said he had one marauder out in the woods, and that was pretty much it. That was his whole history of fighting. But he'd been preparing for it all his good in life. Okay. We go back to Ezekiel over there, all zombified around. They, I mean, they getting up now. All the people. And I'm like, again, everybody dead. All of them. Then all of a sudden, somewhere from out of the blue, one of his men run up. Like, hey, king, let me get the king. We got to get you up out of here. He was like, huh. You no, know, I'm broken down on weak. Save yourself. Save yourself. The boy was like, nope, your majesty. I got to get you up out of here. He's like, don't call me king. I'm not your king. He said, you? Oh, okay, king. Yeah, okay, your majesty. I got you. Let's get up out of here. He uh, pushing his way through walkers. He literally pushed some walkers out of the way. Pushing his way through walkers. Stabbing them up. You know, doing what he got to do to get them a pathway up out of there. So, as they were walking through, he was asking them about Shiva. Had seen Shiva since all the commotion had started. I don't know if I know where Shiva at. Then out of nowhere, his boy gets shot dead. Pow, pow, just falling out. Some dude, this little nerdy look dude, can't say look like he act, look like a bad Napoleon Dynamite. Comes out of the little um I forgot what those things called. The little tin thing. And he they shot him dead. And I'm like, oh snap, this is not the way things are supposed to go. They cannot kill Ezekiel. But then I remember, Negan said, bring the king, the widow, and Rick back alive. It's the only ones he wanted alive. So he ain't worried about, so he ain't got, Ezekiel ain't got to worry about dying right now. Okay. But he feel like, he, you know, the, all the walkers walking up behind him. The dude is all like, yeah, I heard who you are. I know you're supposed to be a king. I heard the story. He say, these people were so dumb to follow somebody who was faking to be a king. They did, and they still follow him. Look how stupid they are. He remembered that Ezekiel had his sword still on him. So he uh, no, took that sword up off of him. And, um, you know, Ezekiel falls down a few times. He's like, dude, get up. You know, did all this to cause all this commotion. Now you want to punk out and lay the heck down? Boy, get your butt up. Ezekiel's like, I can't move. I can't move. He stepped on that leg, the bad leg. Ooh, ooh. He had to put some people down in the process, some thing my was down in the process. Something that bad leg made as it could get back up. Well, back up on the, in the joint. Carl done um made it outside. And she trying to fire it up with the boys. I mean, they got gun fire going. She tucked ducks down behind this uh truck. They lighting that truck up, windows out, holes in. I mean, they blowing some 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 serious artillery out there. And that's all Carol could do is duck down behind a tire. I mean, she couldn't be on the side of the truck because the bullets come through the truck. But at least the tire 
They ain't coming through. She ain't getting no hits through their way. And uh, she's trying to fire back every once in a while. Bah, 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 bah. And she looked to see. It was uh, it said gate number four on the wall behind her. I'm thinking this is some tunnel. She's going to try to distract them. She's going to hit this button and run through. But that ain't what happened. Okay. Go back over to Ezekiel. So, um. Him went old boy, he tries to fight old boy because he tried to grab his sword and cut the boy's stomach. The boy got the drop on him again, got Ezekiel back down and pinned him with his arm. And he's like, ooh, I should light you up, I should light you up. But like I say, Ezekiel is not thinking. He thinking he going to die. That's pretty much because I don't think he even got the word that he one of the people that's supposed to be brought back. So he just thinking he's going to die. So he did some flashbacks back to, you know, days of old right before. And again, just casual conversation while they walking into the wilderness about what they gonna do and who they gonna do it to yada yada this yada yada that you know he's the king he's the majesty this that and third and they go back out to the fight ezekiel fight no broke down napoleon dynamite or they out there having a disagreement argument trying to get him to walk and move then all of a sudden you see napoleon dynamite get sliced in half if y'all ever watched the tv show under the dome in the very first episode when that dome came down it cut right into that cow's body and cut him in half and it just fell open like that you see all the insides the bloods and guts and the intestines and all the internal organs just fall out that was broke down the napoleon dynamite he just fell apart and ezekiel is like what in the world is going on but it's our boy jerry jerry coming on through with a little Tuckins is Tomahawk coming on through, baby. Coming on through. He uh gets Ezekiel here and of course Ezekiel's like, oh save yourself, save yourself. And he's like, no, we're gonna get us, we gonna fight this. So he's like, you just get behind me, King. Get behind me. We about to fight. So inside the gate, Carol is trying to negotiate with them. She throws her gun and says, Hey, if you let me go, or um you don't hear me. I could tell you where the rest of everybody is hiding. They just sitting back waiting for the saviors to appear. And I can give you all that information. And so she's trying to negotiate her way up out of there. And she's like, no, check me. Turn around. I ain't got no weapons. She still had that doggone knife on her hip, though. Even though she didn't use it. But did she use it? She did use it. Because old oh boy started creeping through there. Got a little close. Carol got him hemmed up, the knife against his neck, and then took his gun to him and said, hey, put your guns down, because I'm a kid, you boy. I'm a kid, you boy. And I'm thinking, Carol, they don't give a damn about that man. They don't care about him. And so um, I was right. They didn't care. They said, fuck it. Light him up. Light him up. So they started shooting. Blah, 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 blah. And while they shooting, his body dropped. Carol get the keys off his body. And um, thank God he didn't turn while he was right there with her. And she make her way over there to pop gate number four. Gate number four happened to be the gate that was right behind them. Open the gate on up. In came the walkers. In came the walkers. They walking up behind them. And since they got all this gunfire going off, they can't hear all this growling going on behind them. So they get uh, done to up. They get done up. So now they got to start shooting off walkers. And it ended up being... um. Carol was shooting back at them. They walkers and everything. So everything going because she got a boy gun. And... It ended up being like two of them left. And Carol is like, dude, come on now. Let's stop this. Let's stop playing games. Let's go on. Let it be over with. Y'all ain't got nothing about three or four rounds between the two of you after shooting all the walkers. And um, they look at each other like, dude, how many you got? He's like, shit, I don't know. <laughs> but they weren't about to give up. They wouldn't feel let no Carol sucker, sucker them in there. She was like, look, them weapons not going to make it to where they need to go. And um, so while she negotiating with them, she looks over yonder and see. Ezekiel and Jerry hemmed up on the fence line. <sighs> they go through some more flashback scenes of, you know, days of old uh, with Ezekiel. And, yeah. She make a decision. Um, this is when she actually talked to him about whether or not he ever had a fight before. So she makes the decision to help them. So in helping them, the saviors get away with the 50 cows. Okay? So she go over there and she had the keys from her boys. She got to get to unlock the gate, bring Jerry in and, and Ezekiel through the gate. Ezekiel's her bad. Um, he like, 
Don't go without me. Don't go without me. She's like, no, nah, we ain't leave you. We ain't gonna leave you. So Jerry and Carol and all them, they know they shooting and killing. They doing what they gotta do to make, like I say, clear path for the walkers. Um, and Ezekiel like, damn, they got away with the guns. As soon as he said that, Carol said, no, nah, they didn't get away. And you see the truck fly down the highway. Then you see my baby Daryl fly down after him. And you see D. Rick follow after him in a Jeep. And they going after them. They catching up to him. But dude in the back of the truck with that 50 cal. So he start lighting it up and trying to fire off at Daryl. You cannot kill him. I told you if Daryl died, we riot. Start firing off at Daryl. Daryl falls off the back, skids into the little the bush. So now it's up to Rick. Rick in his Jeep trying to catch up with the military Jeep. And they going and they going and, just, and the dude's still trying to fire off. And I'm like, Bob and Weave, Rick. Bob and Weave. Can't they call it Serpentine? You gotta make the moves, make the moves. Even though that 50 cal does swerve, it's still Bob and Weave, Bob and Weave. So, while they going on to do that, um, they end up shooting at Rick. Rick had uh, swerved off the road. So while he swerved, Daryl got his back on his bike right up behind him. Little boy up in the back with the 50 cal. Now dude is like, oh shoot, I'm here by myself. All alone. Yes, you all by your dark on self. So Rick swole up on the truck. He riding up side to side. And I thought Rick was going to say, pull over. Pull. Like, you know how they normally do in the movies. But no, he didn't. Rick did a little fast and furious move and jumped his butt from his car over to the other Jeep. So he uh stab old boy up in the stomach. They get the fighting up inside of it. Then all of a sudden you see somebody fly out of the doggone Jeep and then the Jeep bear off the road. Boom, crash, boom. Dara rolls up and like, hey, what the heck is going on? What the heck happened? He looked down and then you see Rick crawling up on the bush out the sideline, right? Rick is fine. He's like, well. Look like they ain't gonna get the weapons, so they not gonna get the weapons. But they finna go down there now and check to see what if old boy is dead. They need to check that out. We go back over to Curl, Ezekiel, and, and Jerry. Um, they done made it to this like sewage yard. This is what it looks like, some toxic waste. And you see a bunch of zombies. This you know all skin is peeling off and they waterlogged and everything. When they going through this toxic way, and, and Ezekiel's like, gone, y'all gone without me, I can't do this. And they going back and forth, and Jerry's like, no, come on, your majesty. He's like, I'm not your majesty. He's like, come on, you are my majesty. He's like, yo, call me your majesty, I'm not your king, I'm not nobody. Then all of a sudden, he just slipped into his hood voice. He's like, man, I ain't nobody. I'm just that guy. That's it. That's all I am. The tagline, you know. <laughs> and um, it, Ezekiel done gave up hope. Ezekiel done gave up hope. Carol's like, look here, we got to do this. So Carol jumps down in there. She's still going through, trying to take out the little the, the toxic waste zombies. Jerry come through with Ezekiel, and he um, taking some out, too. All of a sudden, out comes Shifa. Your MVP, baby. Turn, turn her up some walkers. I ran into the kitchen because my pizza was about to burn. And Keena said, oh, they done got Shiva. I didn't see that part. And it's probably a good thing I did not see that part because when I came back, it's all I saw was they had a mouth full of tiger meat. She was gone, y'all. So not only is every damn body from the kingdom dead, they done lost their mascot too. They done killed Shiva. Shiva was like, Shiva could be coming in like, whoa. It's the pressure. It's just too much. The pressure. The pressure. The pressure. They stood and they watched poor little sheep get eaten alive by the little zombie fire creatures. Just and Keita was like, "We do not need no 500 pound zombie tiger walking around." And like I said, I don't think we don't think that the animals could turn into zombies, which is probably where the damn cure is at that they was looking for back in season one or two. The cure to how this stuff got started, or they didn't stop looking for the cure, especially since Abraham died after Eugene lied and said that he had to cure in his head and everything anyway shiva did y'all rest in peace shiva rest in peace it says rest in pieces too soon too soon anyway carl ezekiel and jerry 
they make their way back to the kingdom. The old, the women who couldn't fight and the children, come on out. It's not that many of them. Look like about 25, 30 people left. They walk through the gate. Ezekiel walk up to Ben's little brother. Put a hand on his shoulder. Then he limp himself on into his quarters. And you look at everybody that's standing there, you realize that everybody from the kingdom is gone. There is no kingdom no more. There is no kingdom. Might be st I don't even know what to call that now. Is it peasant land? What is it? Exile? I there's nobody to till the land, nothing. The, the, nothing is left. The, who is he going to govern over? There's no more people. All the men, just about, just about all the men gone, except for the dead and disabled men. They still, I mean, not the dead, the old and disabled. They still there. Ooh, that was it, y'all. If I miss anything, drop it down in the comment section. How y'all feel about Shiva going? That's like the best CGI animal that they had on TV in a while, and Shiva is now dead and gone. Ezekiel is no more himself. He is just that guy. I wonder if he's going to start just talking in his regular voice now. Instead of like trying to emulate the actual king, or do he still need he still need to man up and be kingly for the people that's left, or they you know, it may cause a mutiny. Could they mutiny in kingdoms, or are they just pirates? Anyway, thank y'all for coming back. Thank y'all for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace.